Hi folks, I wonder I wonder how all of you are doing after the eclipse and I was going to do a video of course on Venus opposition Neptune next, but I feel like unbelievably I'm going to do one more short wrap-up video related to the Taurus eclipse because it has been such an intense intense eclipse. The entire eclipse season which technically for all, you know, I can't remember when the whole sort of Israel Palestine thing escalated again, but but from my perspective, eclipse season in and of itself started around October 7th, a week before the October 14th eclipse. Now I'm talking about this particular window related to these two eclipses. And I do want you to know and be clear that from my perspective, it continues till the 4th of November. So we still have till the end of this week of what I would consider um, a need to just just um, roll with uh, the 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 unexpected or the miraculous or the because eclipses can also bring opportunities, you know, eclipses and and you know I've gone to the timeline numerous times with the twenty eighth eclipse we're looking at the week before and after August twenty eighth. Those who are seeing this as one of my first videos, my first video, please know that there's a there's a bigger, more pertinent eclipse video. You can look at my history of videos and you'll see it's the long 45 odd minute one. After that, I did another follow-up video and this is the second follow-up video. I don't normally do this many follow-up videos, but it's been an intense eclipse. And for those people who are done with the eclipses in my videos, then I would refer you to uh, taking a look at the videos I did on the remaining Virgo, Libra, and Scorpio transits for the rest of the year. You can check out whatever you like, but that might be. And also, you're welcome to check out the Libra solar eclipse video because technically by the time we're done with this week and for some people even about now we are back in the Libra solar eclipse energy. Remember the Libra solar eclipse happened on October 14th. We're going to look at the week before and after December 14th uh, as an important milestone related to that eclipse. We're going to look at the week before and after January 24th and of next year and then March 24th of next year we have the corresponding Libra lunar eclipse. On the Libra Aries axis, it is the only sort of complete um, solar and lunar eclipse cycle within that axis. As early as late next year, we get the first eclipse in Pisces. And even though even though the eclipses uh, on the Aries Libra axis continue into 2025, it's, it's just kind of worth noting that, that one could argue and I don't want to argue too strongly, but one could, and I'll get to that later, one could argue that this is sort of the most um, intense part of the Aries-Libra eclipse cycle that we are entering in, insofar as it's a contained six-month period or so. Um, so, so, so some of the quick points that I have covered, of course, is the, already in this video, is keep in mind that while eclipses eclipse things in and out and we put a lot of emphasis on the out and of course we I've mentioned the the relationship between eclipses and news and information about mortality and um, uh, what can we say about that the less we say about that the better at this point in time isn't it isn't it strange that the, the, the people play out certain archetypes right there's been so much we've been progressively been been you know, are, are, are for those of us who are in more protected environments currently and are not directly influenced or directly um, affected by the violence, whatever is going on in the world and in the states related to the shooting that occurred in Maine. And then, of course, we had news of certain prominent pa personalities passing away. And, you know, stars just sort of embody archetypally. They, they kind of you know, it's, it, they become a lens through which we lead our lives and the identification with certain things become so strong. It's, it's, it's been quite, there's no, there's no reason necessarily why one passing in the middle of so much tragedy globally should be, but, but they're just, they're, the ways in which people play roles and archetypes play roles in the way that we navigate the world around us. And it, it was almost like with this eclipse season, Matthew Perry's passing was sort of the straw that broke the camel's back with with everything that that has been coming into our consciousness over the past month or so. It was the it would anyway. Um, but on a 
on a more positive note for some people, just keep in mind that eclipses can also bring sort of positive or even quantum leaps of opportunity sometimes. So so if you're one of those people who's gotten an offer like the one they've like a, a one that they've never had before or an opportunity like one they've never had before or something along those lines I found that they've gotten into this college you know something something more than the mundane then then by all means acknowledge that as well. The one other thing I want to also mention is that you might find and I've said this before is that the days the seven odd days after a full moon are likely to be the most balanced energetically insofar as anything is balanced energetically and um, productive. So if, if you find all of a sudden we get this one week out of four in every lunar cycle where we're not escalating or, you know, decelerating Basically, we it, even though technically the moon is getting smaller over the next week, it is a more manageable and productive um, energy than the first week after a new moon where we've got the wind behind our sails, but we're slowly starting to move. And then the week before a full moon where we're where we're just getting topsy turvy, where we're getting so uh, energized and irritable and angsty. Um, and then the full moon occurs and the wave has crashed on the shore, and even though it's retreating, we are likely to find ourselves in a place where we can execute more easily. So by all means, lean into that while keeping in mind that we've had a full moon, but we've also had a lunar eclipse. So just watch out for eclipsy stuff. You know, it, it, I'm, I'm sort of hoping that, for example, when it comes to someone like Matthew Perry's passing, we, 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 we learned that it was either accidental or or... Or, or natural, we don't we don't get some other news that is um, just sort of compounds on everything else that we've got going on. And even when it comes to even bigger and more impactful things from a global perspective, that 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 that, that, that we can see hopefully some sort of deceleration, although it does not quite look like that. Um, So the four things I've covered already, I'm sorry, I, I took a few notes because I wanted to sort of wrap things up on it. And I was feeling compelled to do this video, even though some of you who've been following my videos might be just like, Avi, really? Another video on the lunar eclipse? But it's been it's been quite an eclipse season. Um, so we've talked about the eclipse season insofar as itself extending for another week till the end of this week. So just watch for that. We've talked about the next few days also at the same time, personally being good days to get things done and get caught up and be productive. Uh, we've got the fact that the Libra eclipse is now taking over. And even though our emphasis has been on the Taurus eclipse for the past few days and past week, um, now we, we're, we're entering more comfortably that Libra eclipse cycle. We've talked about the fact that it doesn't only have to be um, uh, disconcerting or negative change. Uh, some of the things that are brought about by eclipses can also be seen as opportunities or potential quantum leaps. Uh, that allow us to move forward. Um, and with that theme, I just, you know, one final time, I do, the more I reflect on it, the more I think that that word I chose for the Taurus Lunar Eclipse, resolve, um, holds. And I don't mean resolve as in resolve an argument. I don't mean resolve as in dissolve something. I don't mean close something out. I mean decide. I mean commit. And specifically, and, and that in and of itself may be a kind of resolving an argument we're having with ourselves where we may not be committing or we're looking for, or it could be, you know, it, it could fall into the other definition of resolve that I just said I don't mean, but I want to be clear about what I'm talking about when I'm talking about resolve. And it has to do with, as I said, reflecting on the past couple of years, on the eclipses and the Taurus Scorpio cycle, trying to make sense of the opportunities that have come in on the Taurus side of your chart, Taurus part of your chart, the house occupied by Taurus, what it stands for, and to in leaning in or developing, even if the opportunities did not seem that huge to you, even though, as I said in my last video, North Node eclipses or the North Node in general may give the feeling that it is promising more than it delivers. I'm not going to develop that. I talked about this in my last video, so I don't want to spend another 10-15 minutes talking about that here. 
Um, you, you're welcome to look at my last video and I'll paste a link to that at the end of this um, if you want to know more about what I mean by that. But where, what, it, what has come up in the Taurus part of our chart of the past couple of years and how does the, what has leaning into that part of the chart yielded and what has been the resulting release that we've had to do in the Scorpio part of our chart? And it can also be vice versa. What have we had to release in the Scorpio part of the chart that has freed us to lean into the Taurus part of the chart? And if you feel like you're clear about what that is, and if you feel like at least in your heart of hearts, you are clear about what to do with that and what direction to move in, even if right now it may be a question mark with regard to whether you can actually move in that direction or not, at least for yourself, resolve to move forward in a certain direction that resonates with you and that ideally you're able to tie into the north node eclipses now in the Aries part of the chart and the south node eclipses in the Libra part of the chart. At the end of the day, one of two things is going to happen. Either you are going to be on the right path and there's going to be resonance and the universe will support it or else it may not be. But at least this way you have decided or determined or tried to make sense of your own chart with regard to which direction you want to move in. And remember, everything comes at a price. You know, so, so, and, and, and there's going to be no ride that is um, without a cost. There's going to be no wish fulfilled. I mean, we can reflect on some of the lives of some of the folks who passed recently who are in a more public arena who again archetypally represent this you know the fact that you have this and you have this and you have this that is coveted by so many does not necessarily mean that our challenges disappear you know we're we're, we're, we're challenged and thrown curveballs and um brought to our knees and um, all the time, irrespective of who we might be and, and, and what it is that we might have that others covet, etc. So, so, so if, you, if, you, if you decide to live in city A as opposed to city B, it will come at a price. If you decide to marry person A as opposed to B, it will likely come at a If you decide to pursue this kind of line of work as opposed to that, it will come at If you pr pursue your dreams, it will come at a price. If you don't pursue your dreams, we, you know, there's a price to be paid for everything. Um, so, so at least for now, resolving and committing to a plan of action, to a goal as part of the reflecting that you can do related to the Taurus and the Scorpio part of your chart, leaning into the Taurus part of the chart, releasing in the Scorpio part of the chart. And now that the eclipses are finally really on the Aries Libra eclipse the, the, the axis, you know, how have these last eclipses in this relay baton passing that has just occurred, how has what has been occurring recently since April the 19th, how can you tie that to leaning into the Aries part of the chart and releasing something in the Libra part of the chart? And is it all part of the same theme? Is it two different themes? Reflecting and just having a sense of, you know what, even if I am finding myself unable to take one step in this direction tomorrow, let me today at least articulate to myself what feels right to me and what it is that I want as of right now. So what will I pursue step by step by step? And that car alarm agreed with me on that. So, so resolving to go in a certain direction while remain realistic, remaining realistic about the fact that, that, that no path is going to be without its challenges and tremendous challenges and you can change your mind and if it feels like it is resonant, you know, with the North Node and indeed with anything, you know, be responsible to yourself and to others in the best way possible. Not at the cost of your own unhappiness and sacrificing something that is important to you in terms of purpose and your vision, hopefully, but at least know that if you're going to pursue something that you are securing what you need to secure in order to have your baseline needs or more, whatever your sense of security is met. Each of us has to find that balance for ourselves with regard to what is that balance for us with regard to taking certain risks or wanting to move forward in a certain direction or wanting to move forward um, 
towards a sense of adventure and freedom and next steps and excitement and sort of the joy of being alive versus our need for a certain security and sameness and not disrupting what is actually working. We've got to find what that balance is for each of us. But that's what I meant by resolve, if it was not clear. And I would suggest doing that. The In addition to that, and this echoes to the last video, just be clear that, that it is time for you will find as you are taking action that some of your choices for, at, for, you know, for another month or so while Mars is getting ready to conjunct the Sun on the 18th of November, and then we'll take a little bit of time becoming visible, take a little time separating from the Sun. The Sun is going to, Sun is moving towards Mars on the 18th. Mars and the Sun will conjunct, and then the Sun will move forward, and Mars will follow, start to follow behind, but it will start to clear the brightness of the Sun and will become visible again, and will start to exercise its power again. With a conjunction with the Sun, we can say that Mars and the Sun are in communication. It is time for considered action. It may even feel like as we get towards the 15th, uh, the 18th, it may even feel like it is time for very limited action or no action at all when Mars is combust. Um, we, we might find that our Mars powers are significantly compromised because it is so completely combust. We might find that um, conflict or boundary setting or pursuit of goals or energy or any of the sort of masculine archetype testosterone driven stuff faces a kind of uh, a, a quiet time, a kind of burning off of old karmic patterns and some scars, you know, in a certain sense, sorry to sound so anglicized when I said that for people who are from India, but you know, you know what I mean, those patterns, those webs, to burn that off so that you can be, so that Mars can be um, born again after the conjunction of the sun. So as the sun conjunct in the sign of Scorpio, what needs to be released continues to need to be released in the sign of Scorpio. What is nice is that it might be time for considered and thoughtful action. And you may not feel like you have the opportunity for unbridled action, just rushing down a path because both Mars and Mercury are still kind of close to the Sun, even though Mercury is separating from the Sun. Um, so at some point, Mercury is going to become visible sooner and our powers of communication, you know, it will be in the realm of communication and transactions that we um, see the gates open and clear first with action then to follow. And as I said, it's, it's a really, you know, it's not like with eclipses either. There's a hard stop and something is given and there's a handshake to say this is the prize or this is the end result of the Taurus Scorpio eclipses and now we begin anew with the Aries Libra. No, it's a continuum. So as I said in my last video, the planets of action and communication will clear the sun and things will increase in energy and intensity for Mercury, Venus and Mars. But then we're going to head into the Mercury retrograde on December the the 15th to about January 6th or January 3rd or something like that. And then and then it's we really might be looking at that Venus-Mars conjunction on February 22nd as being a sort of um, culmination, for lack of a better word, or a sort of um, certainly some kind of deliverable uh, as we head towards that date that can be connected to the Venus retrograde that we had from July 23rd to August the 15th. Again, if any of this interests you, watch my last video. It's more developed there and you can go back to other previous videos. So I think we've covered all the points that I wanted to cover in this once and for all to be done with this eclipse while knowing that this week may continue to bring some, <sighs> some further developments. Um, so reflect on the time between September, October 2021 and February, excuse me, let's just say November the 4th of this year, 2023. Reflect on what you have gained and built and developed in the Taurus part of your chart, the house occupied by Taurus, what it stands for, what needs to be released or has been released in the Scorpio part of the chart. Even if the gain is not complete and the release is not complete, see if there's a connection between how these gains and these releases um, connect with um, 
I swear to God, the days roll by and I do not have as much sort of noise activity than when I start to do these videos, or at least that's what it feels like. Um, and connect with what has been gained in the Taurus part of your chart and is ripe for release, has been released in the Scorpio part of your chart, how that relates to leaning into now the Aries part of your chart and releasing the Libra part of the chart. If there's a connection, depends on the houses that are occupied. If we're talking about 7th house Aries, 8th house Taurus, or 9th house Aries, 10th house Taurus, it's a it's a very different, there's a, there's a connection between those houses. But if we're talking about 8th house Aries, 9th house Taurus, or 12th house Aries, 1st house Taurus, it's a slightly harder, it may be that the themes are a little bit different, there's a break in the cycle, as there often is when we move from the 8th to the 9th or the 12th to the 1st. So based on that reflection then, if you feel like, okay, I think this is where I want to go, this is what is in my heart, this is how I could lean into the Taurus and then the Aries part of the chart, and this is how I could release in the uh, Scorpio and then the Libra part of the chart, I this is what I'm going to commit to, then gradually as the next few months move forward and during the month of November especially and as you head towards December the 10th it is time for forward movement but you might find and I don't think that this is any bad thing you might just find that you are not quite ready to break into a gallop and that you are just walking a little bit on a tightrope or on a path that needs to be cleared as you go along and the invitation is for really aligned action, really considered action, even action that might feel like, well, I want to go in this direction. What is my next step? Is it here yet? It may not be here for a few days, whatever that is. Okay, then this is it. Then this is it. And see if that alignment continues to grow as you head towards February, for example. Um, I've talked about the fact that you might result, you know, everything comes at a price. We've talked about the fact that opportunities could also come as a result of the eclipse. So we've talked about Libra eclipse taking over. We've talked about next week being a good week to get something done. But we've also talked about the fact that be prepared this is another week of the eclipses. I'm going to leave it at this, my dears. The next video I am planning to do is on the Venus-Neptune opposition. If you want more context on that, take a look at my Virgo transits to for the rest of this year video, please, uh, to have that context. But I'm going to post that in the next couple of days. And with this video, unless something else comes up that requires me to do, you know, I did the lunar eclipse video and more thoughts, and I'm going to label this final thoughts, and hopefully there won't, will not need to be another final, final thoughts. I hope these videos have been helping you through this very turbulent, but for some people, one hopes also forward-looking and productive season. I mean, what I want to say is that the opportunities for productive, and the, let's just say that the opportunities for forward movement in an eclipsy way have been there. The one thing, and this takes me right into this Venus-Neptune um, opposition video I'm going to do next, is to just beware of deceit or deceitful, just, just keep an eye out for that. It's not, the, it's not the only, it's not the biggest theme related to these eclipses by any means. Okay, by any means, but there is that undercurrent which I will address again in the next video. With Venus opposing Neptune, we do have the opportunity to be able to use words, kind words, diplomatic words, thoughtful words, Venusian, um, peaceful language and tone to get our point across, to maybe effect a certain kind of productive outcome with energies or people who might be uh, loss inducing or deceptive or gaslighting or that kind of stuff. So now you know what I'm going to talk about in my next video. If you found this video useful, share, tell your friends about it, comment, like, gives it more circulation on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and if you're interested. Uh, there's a bell icon next to the subscribe button. There's a wiggly bell on top of the bell icon. If you click on that, you'll see it when you click the subscribe button and the bell on the wiggly bell on top, then you'll be notified when I do new videos. And if you're interested in getting a reading, my email address is in the description below. And <sighs> here's to some peaceful reflection of what the Taurus Scorpio eclipses have brought us all. And hopefully 
as a result of all of that and connecting that to the Aries Libra eclipses that are now completely taking over, resolving on the direction we want to take next, at least acknowledging where we want to go in our hearts and understanding that we will need to do it in a way that keeps our security in mind, that it is that isn't too rash or reckless. Um, but acknowledging that at least is a first step and 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 as I said, tying it to what that means to the to the Aries Libra eclipses. Bye everybody, over now.